in North Queensland. Townsville, the site of round four for the Yokohama V8 Youth Series. And one man who's been a bit of a star in this championship over the years, George Elliott, former NASCAR race. It's been a tough weekend so far. They bent the suspension arm in the Victoria Coffee Commodore in qualifying. But how about this last year? Got absolutely wiped out by Giannis Derrams over at turn six. Lucky not to get involved with a few others. Warren Meltz had a tough weekend too. He's missed practice with an engine change in the Wake Up Commodore. But that's not so bad as what happened in Darwin. Greg Willis turns the Commodore around and Giannis Derrams gets involved as well. Time for race two. The top 12 have been inverted for this one. So Reese McNally will take pole position alongside Gary Baxter on the front row. But Damien, let's have a look at this 13-turn circuit, just under three Ks. And it really is a bit of a bull ring. And right here, turn six. Watch the cars on exit there. Big attitude. A seven, eight quick change of direction, which is hard work for an 1800 kilo ute. 11, 12, 13, good opportunities for passing, especially into 13 where we often see contact. A couple of big positions for braking manoeuvres as well, so tyres and brakes will be hurting by the end of these races. Let's have a look at the grid. Reese McNally, as I mentioned, will start from pole alongside Gary Baxter, whose car's had its preparation change to the Williams Race Tech team in between rounds. Of course, Grant Johnson and Jack Ellsgood dominators of race one they go back to 11th and 12th Gary McDonald a lot further back than we've seen otherwise in this season so far tough work for him ahead because the guys in front of him right back to 14th 16th they're all competitive 19th is Graham Edwards a local from here in Townsville making his debut in the Ute series down the back though Charlie O'Brien had brake problems in the earlier race and Ben Dunn had a diff drama so he will start the storage king. That's the yellow falcon right down the back of the grid. So the youngster Reese McNally against the experienced Gary Baxter. And look for Craig Donis, the green thirsty camel Commodore is right in behind. And look for the fast guys to charge through. SS Induction's in car with Donis round the outside of our pole sitter, but Baxter's got the lead. Now, where do you break? That's the big worry. I don't know, do you brake when the car in front has the brake lights come on, or do you think, no, I can go deeper? Certainly Andrew Fisher, who were riding with there, did it. And it paid off for him. He made a few positions, and now three wide into... Oh, oh, Brad Patton made a move, backed out of it. Andrew Fisher nailed him, and Ryle Harris, the bonnet on the Commodore, is popped. Well, you saw Andrew Fisher get a nudge. Ryle Harris then got involved, and how is he seeing where he's going? Um, His head must be down <laughs> looking at that very small gap underneath the bonnet. He's doing OK. If that was you or I, we'd be in the fence by now. But that for yourself. Well, he's got to come in. There's no way they'll let him stay out with that. Chris Pitha. Oh, gee, this could be good. Oh, excuse me. David Cedar's around the outside, but that's not going to flat <laughs> down by itself. It. He has Mirrors, to go to pit lane. Bonnets, brake lights, everything's flying. I thought I'd seen everything in the Ute race, but I've never seen this before. Yeah, no surprises there. That car has to report to pit lane, so Cedars makes the dive. Now Pippa is trying to get through, but Harris wants to get to the pits, and it's off to the right. Gets there, just. That's where it would have been up to the team of 42, the blue car there, to get on the radio and say, 58, Ryle Harris needs to get into pit lane. As you said, there's no way he could compete with a bonded up like that. Well, speaking of competing, Gary Baxter is off and running. He's been spending some time in Alice Springs, so he's been hanging out in the warm weather since Darwin. Oh, Pitha in the fence. What's going on here? I think he said that's Kiwi for the cars in drama. Jeremy Gray, big lunge. Brad Patton is involved as well, so they're all swarming on our pole sitting in the youngster, Reese McNally, who, by the way, has a birthday today. Happy birthday. Bang! When I turned 20, I didn't get whacked by all these youth races. Andrew Fisher, great move up the inside. A lot cleaner than the one the lap before, which, which has caused the damage we see there on the front of the Jesus Falcon. Speaking of damage, Whoa. that is awful amount of damage and tough to fix and more damage still. Chris Pitha. Now we see a replay. Oh, I owe Andrew Fisher an apology. It was Chris Pitha into the back of Harris, who was into the back of Fisher, who was then into the back of Patton. Yep, I got all that. Yep. And yep. if you have a look there, naked eye 3D. Naked to the eye for Ryle Harris there. I don't know how he saw for the rest of that lap. With great difficulty, I would guess. And this is what happened to Pitha. Oh, Greg Johnson, Amar. Oh, that's nasty. And Jack look, at, oh, look, 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 look at the left front. It's damaged and broken. Pitha doesn't know it until now. Oh, he's just given it a big bag of revs, dropped the clutch, and it's just speared straight right into the wall. Mate, More really damage fast. still. Really Baxter leading. Dontis is on him. The Thirsty Camel Commodore 
is flying. They're getting to grips with this Commodore. Remember that Dontis in the past has driven a Falcon, but he is hooked up and flying. And he's bumped into Baxter. Can you believe this? Baxter, though, hangs on to it and makes it around the corner. Are these guys serious? I mean, that speed is intense. He's surrounded by concrete. Did you hear that? That was a radio to Craig Dontis. He has a pit lane penalty. Not for this. He jumped the start. Unbelievable. Oh. I mean, he's showing great speed. I think Baxter broke a little bit earlier than he was expecting because Baxter, of course, was to the inside. Here's oh, the replay. Here you go. Look. Rolling. Rolling. Oh. Three oh. It's a tough yeah. call, but the right call. Yep, true. Now, Brad Patton on Jeremy Gray. And we know Jeremy Gray likes getting in and amongst it. New to the scene, but he's making his mark. SS Inductions in car will go to pit lane. Gary, a bit of a touch-up there. He just broke so damn early. That's exactly <laughs> what you said. As Fisher grabs Brad Patton. Look at Cena's full opposite lock. Nails the throttle way too early, but geez, that looks good. You're getting excited, but it's slow. Look how slow he is down the straight because of it. I don't care, mate. I want to be entertained, and that is entertaining. Yeah, true. Can't argue. DBA in car with Fisher. Brad Patton has been pretty solid this year. He's good on the brakes as well. Has a little bit of a look. Not quite close enough. Look at Kim Jane in the background. Making big moves. I'm thinking about the next Gloria Jean's coffee. The signage on the back of that Jesus Falcon is unbelievable. Look at the damage, though. There's a lot of work to be done between race two and three for that team. Well, and that team. Yeah. And that team. Yeah. Uh, just all of the above. D. Option D. We jump on top on the roof of Kim Jane's Commodore. And Cedars is sideways again. Kim will like what he sees. <laughs> oh, there he goes. He's into it again. Go, boy. Back under brakes, a quick change of direction. Oh, debris on the track, no surprises there. Listen to Kim Jane trying to get the power down. There's dust, there's dirt, it's just drama everywhere. And it's hard to keep up with the racing, it's hard to keep up with you as well. But the man they're all trying to keep up with is Gary Baxter. He leads the way. Who is on Andrew Fisher's side? Ryle Harris, similar damage, bonnet went flying up. The Jesus car, look at it, and it hasn't flown up. It's the divine bonnet pin. Look at this though, Kim Jane. Has got David Cedars, the new Lon Falcons, down the inside. Oh! oh he's, he's, he's in the inside, and Kim misses a gear. Bit of pressure there, never goes astray. I saw a little bit of blue smoke from Kim Jane's car right there, the yellow one. We'll keep an eye on that. The new Lon in car with Kim Jane, the former series runner up. How ironic, the new Lon in car. Looking forward to the new Lon car that just passed him. <laughs> uh, just crashed into as well, by the way. Good, tough. Hard V8 new racing, and we said at the start of the show we thought that the boys would loosen the shackles this weekend. We were right. Absolutely, and I've got to say, credit to Cedars there, the white car in front, really loose at the back of the car under brakes. He is right on the limit of braking in that car. Talk to me about Jeremy Gray, the rock star Falcon, the black machine running second in the race. Rookie has got a lot of experience in two wheel competition as Cedars makes a nice move on Brad Patton, but Jeremy Gray from the first round in Adelaide was not afraid of any of these guys. We come back to that as Kim Jane takes advantage of Cedar's move. Listen to the down change. Big locker, big push in the rear. Patton's not giving up. Kim Jane, Cedar's sideways again. Drops a wheel in the dirt. It's going to be three or four wide as McNally decides to play. If he keeps driving sideways, we're going to need some CPR out of the commentary box because this is good stuff. Kim Jane's through on the inside. McNally's around the outside. Battle of the brakes, turn two. And now the old hands. People like Kim Jane, who are starting to feel the pressure on board now with Jack Ellsgood, who gets great drive. Baroto in car, and he is just cruising through. He just glided up onto the tail of that pack, and he's going to pick them off one by one. And there's McNally in the NRW sponsored car, blue and white top of screen. We talk about him, we talk about Jeremy Gray. Rookies in this category are just coming on gangbusters. Great shot here, this left right sequence through the Parkland area, then this hard stop. You know, the chicane at turn seven, and again, seen as the rear just wants to swap ends. Not sure that time that it was ideal. It's allowed Kim Jane to really put the pressure on. Fisher closing in on Jeremy Gray despite having a car that looks like it's gone eight rounds with Mike Tyson. It's still going fast. We ride on board the DBA in car and nice to see he's brought the coffee as well. Unbelievable. Talk about product placement. Should probably put the drink straw into that as well. Baxter hasn't been able to get away. The Falcons 
are starting to chase down the Commodore. Half race distance now.